Hi everyone, today on Sweet Talk, I'm making homemade marshmallows. Might take a little more effort than opening a bag, but I promise you it is so worth it. So I'm starting with our sugar syrup. We'll begin by taking three cups of granulated sugar, adding this to a saucepan. And then we're adding one and a quarter cup of light corn syrup. If you're having issues with your syrup sticking to your container, sometimes you can give it a little spray with oil. Sometimes that helps so that you can get every last drop out. And then three quarters cup of water and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna get this going on high heat, stirring so that the sugar doesn't burn. And we're gonna stir this just until the sugar dissolves. All right, so the sugar is just about dissolved. And actually, now that this is bubbling, I'm gonna put a candy thermometer in here. And I want to let it boil until it reaches 238 degrees Fahrenheit on the candy thermometer. So while that boils out some of the water, I'm gonna start blooming my gelatin. Here I have 3 quarters cup of cold water, four packets of gelatin over the cold water. We're gonna let this get saturated. It's called blooming kind of activates the gelatin. If you need to, if it seems like you're getting some sugar crystals around the edge, you can take a cup of water like this and a pastry brush and just kind of go around the edges. This will help prevent crystallization. It's ready. So now I'll just get this going on low to break up the gelatin. And then I will slowly pour in my syrup. You wanna to try to avoid hitting the beater or the side of the bowl. Just that last little bit. So now I'm turning up the speed on my mixer. Once it releases a little bit of the heat, I'll turn it up even further. But if you go straight to high, you're gonna get a hot, sugary mess all over your counter. Could be a little bit dangerous, so please go slowly. So now I'll let this beat for about 12 minutes on high speed until it's nice, thick, and glossy. So this looks nice and thick, and this is the stage where we'll add our flavoring. So today I'm using pure vanilla extract. I'm gonna use two teaspoons, but you could also use any other extract. Peppermint, orange could be really nice, some rose water. You could add a little coloring if you wanted to, but today I'm just doing classic. You could also use vanilla bean seeds if you wanted to. So just mix this till it's thoroughly combined. I only added one, so I'm gonna add a second one. All right, so we're ready to scrape into our pan. And the trick here, because it can get messy, is while I normally like to get every last bit out, sometimes you have to leave a little bit behind because as it cools, it sets up. And if you try to get every last bit out, you will have a sticky mess. So I'm pouring this into my prepared nine by 13 glass baking dish. To prepare it, I lightly brushed it with oil and then I laid some parchment in and then I brushed it with more oil. You wanna make sure that everything you're using is nice and oiled up. Look how fluffy and beautiful. Smooth this out. You can't move it around too much because again, as it cools, it's going to set. I kind of like the way they look with a few swoops on top, but you could always add some oiled parchment to the top if you wanted to to make it a little bit more smooth. So I'm gonna let this set until it's nice and firm for three hours. So my marshmallows are ready, they're nice and firm. I'm so excited to get into these. So you wanna start by taking some confectioner's sugar and dusting it over a clean work surface. I've laid down some parchment here. You wanna give it a nice, heavy dusting. That looks good to start. Now we unmold the marshmallows. So you want to take a lightly oiled knife. You wanna make sure all of your tools are oiled for this. We're gonna run around the edges of the baking dish here scrape and pull them away. So now we gently lift. See how this side looks. And now we're going to unmold onto the confectioner sugar. If you did a good job oiling, it should peel right back. I can already feel that they're so tender and springy exactly what we're looking for. So now I'm gonna dust a little bit more over the top just to ensure no sticking when we cut them. Just a little bit more sugar over the top. 
And then we'll dump the rest into this bowl. We're gonna toss the marshmallows in there once they're cut. So now I'm gonna take an oiled chef's knife to slice my marshmallows. And you could always square these off if you wanted to to make them have kind of perfectly straight edges. I don't mind a little bit of curve, so I'm probably just gonna slice them as is. So I'll start by slicing them in half. Kind of wiggle them apart. And I'll cut them crosswise into squares. And then you can just drop them right into your bowl of sugar. Wow, these are so luscious. Look how puffy and springy this is. Now we just want to toss these in the sugar just so that they don't stick on the edges. I think they make for a pretty decadent s'more, so I think that's what I'm going to be doing today. But look how beautiful these are. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, s'more time. So I'm going to take my graham cracker, you guys know how to do this, and some chocolate, like a lot of chocolate on my s'more. Now skewer my marshmallow, look how soft and fluffy that is. And Obviously, you would ideally do this outside on a campfire, but today, since we're inside, I'm gonna use a blowtorch, which is pretty fun. Get this guy going. Now just give him a nice golden torch. These melt so well. Get so beautiful and golden. All right, nice and melty. This looks amazing. I mean, come on. What is better than that? This looks unreal. So there you have it. Light, fluffy, beautiful marshmallows to upgrade your summer s'more. I think these are absolutely awesome. I hope you do too. There's lots more fun ideas for summer on MarthaStewart.com. Enjoy. Mm. S'mores are the best. <laughs>